Hello, hello, and welcome to another podcast episode of Overpowering Emotions, where I talk all things big emotions, emotion regulation, anxiety. I am in the back to school series, but everything I talk about, um, I'm setting up routines and skills that kids need to learn at any point in life. These are essential skills that are good for all of us lifelong. Uh, we just happen to be at the time of this recording going back to school in the next little while. I know we're in the summer right now, but really these are things that are going to be helpful for everyone. And I'm going to focus on different tips really to focus on whether it's routines. I've been focusing on that. I've got some articles. I'll be putting them in the show notes as well, just to get into specific things around things like transitioning back to school, for example, but it's really supporting our kiddos success now and for the rest of their lives. Some of the episodes might be a little bit shorter. I had originally put like the top 20 things that our kids need to learn or to do or to set up, um, but it just became far too long because if you know me, I tend to go on tangents and talk a lot about different things. So I'm going to be focusing on, you know, something specific, trying to focus on one thing or one skill at a time. So I'm hoping that my episodes are going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to run through some of the things that we can do to set up our kiddos, whether they're children or teens, young adults, even up for success. Once school starts, like I said, still important for the rest of their lives. So some of the things that I've talked about already that you can do to help your kids um, when they're transitioning back that are really important, but there's other key pieces that I'll be talking about as well. For today, um, it might sound a little redundant because I'm going to be focusing specifically on setting up healthy habits. Healthy habits, like I said, are going to be important for all of us always for our entire life. But I really wanted to make sure that I talked about this. I hummed and hawed because it's all things that we know, but I really can't stress how important it actually is. And so that's why I wanted to make sure that we're focusing on this. So first, which I did talk about a little bit last week, if you didn't hear that episode, is establishing a daily routine. So we really need to start thinking about now <clears throat> And definitely more specifically, once they are back into school, into those school routines is establishing and maintaining all of those, um, you know, sleep habits, right? Consistent wake up bedtime schedules. We want to promote that healthy sleep habits. That's really important. And I'm going to be going into promoting academic success in coming weeks, um, but setting that wake up and bedtime schedule not only helps regulate kiddos sleep patterns, but it really lays that foundation for their lifelong habits, right? It, it improves their overall well-being, their academic achievement. It's just good habits to be getting into anyways. Consistency at this is the cornerstone of any successful daily routine that we're going to be doing up. So when we're adhering to a consistent wake-up time and bedtime, those schedules, kiddos start to develop a sense of structure and predictability, which helps with self-regulation, emotion regulation, things that I often talk about. It also helps support their internal body clock, their circadian rhythm that promotes better sleep quality, but it also helps their brain functioning, their problem solving, their learning, their memory, their attention span, their all of those things are then important for how well they do in school right? It helps regulate their mood. So it's not just about circadian rhythm. It's about all of these things. We got to make sure they're getting enough sleep and having that consistency, right? And when they are able to get that sleep, they are way better to focus, to take in information, to remember that information, to solve problems, to show higher levels of creativity, so we can see that promoting their success socially, emotionally, academically. On the other hand, we know that, you know, sleep deprivation, irregular sleep schedules, that reduces their cognitive function. It reduces their brain power to be able to regulate their emotions. They're not going to do as well in school. They're not going to be able to pay attention and concentrate. So we really see that sleep piece and the consistent bedtimes are going to be really important. And the recommended sleep duration, that's really essential for the brain to be able to process information, consolidate their memories, rejuvenate for the next day's activities 
So it's really important to follow those guidelines and take them seriously and make sure that we get enough sleep and making sure our kiddos get enough sleep. So we want to make sure we're establishing a consistent and calming bedtime routine. That's really critical to to help the body and the brain realize, okay, it's time to start winding down. We need to start preparing for sleep. So think about that routine, even if it's just reading a page of a book, maybe doing um, a quick body relaxation, some sort of relaxation techniques. Maybe it's listening to a soothing song. We want to set up something that's doable, something that's easy that we can do consistency uh, consistently because that consistency is key, right? Following the same routine every night, that Our brain works in association. It's going to help our brain make that connection. Ah, we're listening to this song. It's time to start winding winding down. I'm preparing the brain to get to sleep. And we're establishing healthy sleep patterns, right? So, So when we've got those routines and our brain's realizing, okay, this is what we're doing. It's time for sleep. It's actually going to help us fall asleep faster. So that can be really important. Uh, organizing the sleep environment. That's important too, for making sure that our kiddos get quality rest. So making sure all things that I've talked about, a cool room, a dark room, night lights, maybe start working on that, right? Not great. We want a dark room and a quiet room. Um, I know I use blackout curtains. My girls have blackout curtains. So using things like that, earplugs, if they need to white noise machines, just to minimize any disturbances, any electronic devices should be removed from the bedroom. Doesn't matter how old they are. Um, the blue light we know emitted from the screens can disrupt that sleep white wake cycle. Um, but but even if we turn the phones off, if we know that our phone is there, and especially our digital natives, our kiddos. There's this FOMO, fear of missing out or fear of what if I got a text? I need to respond right away. Just having it there in their room, knowing it's within reach, it's accessible is enough to keep their brains stimulated. We want to make sure that they're comfortable. You know, is their mattress, is their pillow or their pajamas, their sheets, are all of those comfortable? That can be really important. Now, having that consistent bedtime routine is really important, but a structured wake-up routine is equally important. Kiddos should be getting up at the same time every morning, right? That really sets a positive tone for the day ahead. And that even includes on weekends. And I'm going to say that more than once. So what is their wake-up routine? It could be activities like making their bed, maybe doing some light stretching. That's my thing. I get up. I floss as I go pee, I put on my workout clothes, I go and work out, I do a little meditation, I go and walk my dogs, and then I shower and get ready for my day and have breakfast and all of that kind of stuff. So having a deliberate start to the day, that really fosters the sense of I'm prepared and I'm ready for learning. I'm prepared and ready to do whatever it is that I need to do today. So, I mean, flexibility is always important, but I'd really maintain consistency even during weekends, even during holidays, really to reinforce that daily routine. And it helps it just become so more and more automatic for them. And we don't have to then always be reminding them Um, and helping children maintain those healthy sleep patterns that can be helpful as well. Just having that regular, even our wake up routine. And I know it's tempting to allow late nights and sleep-ins on the weekends, Um, but maintaining that consistency in sleep schedules and those those structured routines is really important, even through the week, even through the summer. Irregular sleep patterns can really lead to a phenomenon known as phenomenon known as social jet lag. And that's where the body really struggles to adjust to different sleep-wake timings. And so we don't want that to to happen to our kiddos, especially if they have problems with sleep. So we're encouraging our kiddos to stick to their regular sleep routine, even on weekends, ideally. We would just want to make sure their bodies and their minds are staying well rested and getting the the refueling and rejuvenation that it needs. So again, keep the wake up and the bedtime schedules within, I mean, if you're going to be flexible, maybe within an hour 
at most of the regular routine to minimize any distraction. So really keep that focused. I'd also suggest a limit um, to, well, screens, obviously, but caffeine, sugary drinks, and I'll get back to the screens in a second, but for sure, caffeine, sugary drinks, especially in the afternoon and evening, because it can interfere with that falling asleep piece. And then that can disrupt the sleep cycle. Um, I consider getting rid of naps. Napping can be really beneficial for younger children, obviously, but it's essential if we are going to nap short, 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 20, 30 minutes max, not late in the afternoon that can interfere with nighttime sleeping as well. I'd really empower your kiddos, involve them in the planning of their daily routine, discuss the importance of having that consistent sleep schedule and consistent wake up schedule and and the routines before, you know, as they're falling asleep and waking up, encouraging them to make choices within that framework of a routine. We just want to help foster a sense of ownership and responsibility of this. And of course, you know, kiddos follow us. So we have to emulate our own behaviors, modeling the consistent routines to make sure that we're effective. We can't tell them what to do and then not do those similar things for me uh, ourselves as well. So we are demonstrating the importance. We're going to prioritize sleep. We're going to maintain regular sleep routines and wake up routines. We're um, even our meal times, maintaining regular meal times as well. Just having that balance sort of daily schedule. So by leading by example, we're reinforcing the value of those routines, showing them that this really is something that's important and we're instilling lifelong habits in our kiddos. So we want to establish a daily routine to promote better sleep. Again, going to enhance our cognitive function and really foster our overall well-being. And truly, you know, if we're prioritizing that daily routine, we're empowering kiddos to develop self-discipline, self-regulation, time management skills, a sense of responsibility. Okay. So that's the first piece. Then the next thing. So the first is sleep. The next thing is making sure our kiddos are getting lots of physical activity. I've talked about it before. I have a whole episode just on how that's important for managing anxiety. It promotes better sleep quality. It helps with falling asleep. Of course, we don't want to do vigorous exercises close to bedtime because that can have a stimulating effect on the body. But that regular exercise is really important. Obviously, there's the physical health, but it really plays a big role too in our overall functioning, our overall well-being. When we exercise, our body releases endorphins, those feel-good hormones, and that promotes it's a positive sense of well-being and vitality. And so when we're encouraging our kiddos to participate in any physical activity, it could be running, swimming, biking, anything, team sports, you're providing them with that energy boost that can carry them throughout their day, through all of their daily activities, including school. So that's going to be really important. And yes, physical activity has a direct impact on our cognitive functioning, just like sleep does as well. Our memory being able to pay attention, our problem-solving skills, that physical activity, it increases the blood flow to the brain. And and it's helping our brain communicate with itself. It's delivering essential oxygen and nutrients to the brain. That in turn, it stimulates brain cell growth, right? That's how uh, the gray matter in our brain, it enhances the neural connections so that our brain can talk with different parts, which is important for learning, for problem solving for regulating our emotions for thinking before we act all of that's really important we see that regular exercise is directly linked with academic achievement it can enhance that attention the focus remembering things processing information all of those kinds of things now the concentration and focus is huge. I know I've talked a lot about my ADHD brain and I have to work out in the morning. Otherwise I'm kind of a gong show for the rest of the day. So engaging in physical activity, it helps not even just for the ADHD brain, for everybody, it helps clear the mind. It reduces any distractions. It helps improve our attention span. Kiddos and teens who participate in regular exercise, we see improved cognitive flexibility, being able to problem solve, take other people's perspectives navigate, you know, conflicts and all of those kinds of things. Um, They're able to 
concentrate, but even adapt to different situations. And so when we're incorporating this physical activity into the routine, we're creating an environment that really promotes optimal focus, optimal learning, um, optimal academic achievement so that they can take in, absorb, and remember information that they're learning. It's also a really powerful stress reliever too for our kiddos and teens. That that release of endorphins, it acts as a natural mood enhancer and it helps alleviate some of the stress and anxiety. When we're encouraging regular exercise during childhood and adolescence, that really helps establish a foundation for a lifetime physical activity. So by making that exercise a consistent part of their routine, we're instilling healthy habits that are going to carry over into adulthood, right? And then that's going to help if you think lifelong. So many adults I know struggle with establishing exercise routines, and it's because they didn't set those those routines up in childhood. It's so much easier to maintain them. People ask me all the time, how do you work out every, like, where do you get the motivation to work out every day? Well, I don't even have to think about it because I did start working out as a kiddo. That is, that routine was so entrenched for me. And so if they're continuing into adulthood, that's going to prevent onset of future conditions, chronic conditions, right? Obesity, ob- obesity, um, heart problems, mental health disorders. So when we're prioritizing that physical activity in their formative years, we're empowering our kiddos to maintain a healthy and active lifestyle throughout their lives. So we've got our sleep. We've got our exercise. My next tip is all about having a balanced diet, making sure kiddos have nutritious meals and nutritious snacks that supports their brain functioning, their learning, their overall development and you know, well-being really. And so you're seeing this trend of healthy habits. That's what the focus of today is. We got to think of the brain. It's a really complex organ. Okay. And, and it requires a steady supply of nutrients to be able to function at its best. Something like 25% of the calories that we consume is actually used up by our brain. And so when we're providing our kiddos with a balanced diet, we're ensuring that they have the essential nutrients. So omega-3 fatty acids, we know that that's crucial for brain development and for cognitive functioning because it supports memory, it supports focus, it focus, it really helps focus on their overall brain health. So that could include things like uh, fatty fish, obviously, so salmon. It could be flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, those types of things. We know complex complex carbs. Man, I'm having a really hard time talking today, getting my mouth around all these words. Complex carbs is important because that helps maintain kiddos' blood sugars at stable rates, right? So that supports their sustained attention, their sustained concentration throughout the day. So complex carbs, that includes whole grains, fruits, vegetables, all of those things, right? They provide the brain with a steady supply of glucose, which it's is really its main energy source. So whole grains, that includes brown rice, quinoa, whole wheat bread. We want to choose those types of things over any sort of refined, re- refined grains, um, just to make sure that they're getting those essential nutrients and that sustained energy. Protein is really important. Lean meats, eggs, dairy products, legumes, nuts, they all contain amino acids. Those are the building blocks of neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are really important for being able to transmit messages between the brain cells. So to be able to think before I act, those messengers need to be going throughout the whole brain, right? It also supports learning. It supports problem solving and and everything that I've been already talking about. Protein also helps regulate our mood and our behavior. So that's why that's really important. And of course, colorful fruits, colorful vegetables, berries, spinach, broccoli, it's just rich in antioxidants. And antioxidants are important because they really protect the brain from oxidative stress, from inflammation, It helps promote healthy brain aging and cognitive functioning. I eat a lot of blueberries because I'm worried about my brain health. So that's something that I definitely focus on. But you want to make sure we're exploring lots of different colors and different textures to to make sure that that diversity is going to be important to make sure they're getting all of the nutrients that they want. Um, We want to make sure that they are getting 
uh, lots of healthy sources of fat. So avocados, nut seeds, olive oil, those fats provide the brain with energy. It supports the brain cell structure. It helps, you know, absorbing any fat soluble vitamins as well. Uh, one thing I've talked a lot about, especially when it comes to stress is hydration. That's essential for optimal brain function. So we want to make sure our kiddos are drinking enough water throughout the day to maintain hydration levels. I've got actually, I have just planted some trees and um, I've got a little, you know, water meter stick. I wish we could have that too. Like you're, you're hydrated versus completely dehydrated. Although we can usually tell with our pee color and smell, right? But that could be a good gauge. But dehydration is a problem because it can lead to fatigue. It can make it really hard to concentrate. It can be really hard to learn, to pay attention, to problem solve. And we know that being dehydrated, it, it, increases the cortisol that goes out into the body too. So that's increasing our stress, right? So we want to make sure we're not getting dehydrated. We want to make sure that they're not drinking lots of sugary drinks, looking at water. Water is the most important thing for them to be drinking. We need to remember that promoting a balanced diet is it's not just about the individual meals. It's about fostering healthy eating habits overall. So always, again, we're going to be leading by example. We're going to be modeling healthy eating habits. We're going to be making nutritious choices ourselves. Our kids are more likely to embrace those healthy food choices when they see us enjoying them as well. Involving them in meal planning and meal preparation is really important. Let them choose things at the grocery store. Help them make things at home. That involvement creates such a sense of ownership and encourages them to try new foods. And I have, you know, I've talked a little bit about um, uh, like there's different programs. I use HelloFresh. I've tried a couple of different ones and I've loved it. I was really hesitant to do anything around it, but I love it because it comes with a recipe card, all of the ingredients that's needed. And my youngest daughter loves to cook for us. And she used to be such a picky eater, but now she will eat anything that she makes. So that's a really important thing that we can help, you know, especially our picky eaters. We want to make sure on that note is just creating a positive and relaxed atmosphere during our meal time. We, we can encourage family conversations, but we want to avoid distractions. We don't want screens or any electronic devices at the dinner table. We don't want to bring negativity. So no fighting at the dinner table because that negative energy is just going to, you know, make it really hard to focus on eating and focusing on healthy food choices. So we're looking at the well-rounded meals. We are going to be promoting that through our own modeling. We're also going to be looking at nutritious snacks as well. That's vital for maintaining optimal brain functioning throughout the whole day. So look at the snacks that we're sending to school with our kiddos. That's important too. The only other thing that I really want to make sure I include here is promoting good hygiene habits. And I know a lot of kiddos struggle with that, but that's important too for their overall well-being. It, and it also helps foster that sense of responsibility for their well-being important as they get into adulthood as well. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, when I'm looking at personal hygiene, it's really all of the practices and habits that we do to maintain our own cleanliness, right? We're preventing the spread of germs. We're keeping ourselves clean and smelling not terrible that people don't want to, you know, try to avoid us. We want to teach our kiddos about how practicing good hygiene habits plays a big role in preventing the spread of diseases, for example. So we're going to be explaining this for people to want to come hang out with them. It contributes to our overall physical health because we're reducing any infections, any skin conditions, any dental problems. It's also supporting our healthy growth and development. So finding the so what factor for your kiddos? What is it that's going to really resonate home for them? All of these things is important, but it also enhances their self-esteem. It enhances their confidence. It helps them feel fresh and comfortable, ready to engage in whatever daily activities they've got going on for them. Um, personal hygiene really helps promote positive social interactions because we're showing respect for ourselves and for others. Really, at the end of the day, we know that kiddos who practice good hygiene habits, they're more likely to build positive relationships and to participate confidently in social settings than kiddos who don't have these good habits. So you can see this is really important and, and, and 
not just for, you know, smelling good. It, there's so many different levels that is actually supporting their success, right? And I think it's something that we don't explicitly focus on, you know, after our toddler years, especially when it comes to teaching, like when they're younger and toddlers will explain, okay, we got to wash our hands, fronts and backs and tops, because we don't want to, you know, get sick or make other people get sick, but we don't continue this discussion, right? For when kiddos hit puberty, there's different things that the kiddos need to learn about explicitly. Oftentimes they need to have that. So we really want to focus on this and really focus on the buy-in for them, because as they get into the tween teen years, a lot of kids kind of turn their back to that personal hygiene. So we want to make sure we're promoting that good hygiene habits, no matter what age, right? Even if it's just a good reminder um, for, for, you know, some of the things, right? There's signs everywhere about the importance of hand washing and how to wash with soap and water. It's obviously adults who are going to be reading those signs. We got to do it for at least 20 seconds, especially before eating and after using the bathroom and after coughing and sneezing. Those kinds of things are really important. So they're exposed to those, but about other things can be really helpful. So for example, why is it important for us to brush our teeth twice a day for two minutes every time? Do they know that they're supposed to do it for two minutes twice a day? Do they know why? Right? why regular flossing and, and routine dental checkups can be really helpful for them. So maybe it's chatting. What is the benefit? Why would we do these things? What would be bad if we didn't do these things? Same thing with bathing and showering. It's amazing how many kiddos don't do this regularly and don't really see the point in it or why I would do it. So we want to make sure that they're maintaining that cleansiness right? And in some kiddos, they might need help to see how to properly clean themselves. How are they cleaning their back? Right? I remember that was something that I actually thought about years ago. I remember a mom saying my son would just come out and his hair is dripping wet. I don't think he washed it and his back would be dripping wet. Again, I don't think he washed it and he would just throw a t-shirt on, assuming that would help you know, dry it off. Well, how is he cleaning it? So teach them, how do you wash your hair? How are you washing your face? The hair piece, I remember I would show my girls when they were itty bitty, how to wash their hair with shampoo. And then we would use conditioner, but I never explicitly told them you don't condition your whole head like you would with shampoo. And there was a point where my, one of my daughters would always have really gross, greasy hair after, even right after a shower. And it, I realized it's because I never really ta taught her how to use conditioner properly as well. Right. So looking at their back, their underarms, um, their genitals, their feet, right. And, and discussing the importance, not just of cleaning their bodies, but changing clothes regularly as well. Right. Even respiratory etiquette. That's something that, you know, we might teach, but not usually in a positive way. It's usually in a more punitive sort of way. So this is teaching proper coughing and sneezing etiquette, for example. So we're covering our mouths and noses. Maybe we've got a tissue or maybe into our arm, right? We just want to make sure we're preventing um, things from, from spreading. And I know I had to talk to one of my kids about this too, but even just throwing away the tissue, where does it go when you're done with it? It doesn't just get dropped right here. And why not? Why wouldn't we just drop it here? It's not me being picky and nagging. It's we can spread germs this way, right? And then why would it be important to wash hands after? So asking those meta questions or open-ended questions about why do you think it's important? Why do you think we do these practices can be really helpful. Nail and hair care, that's another important one too. We're going to show them and encourage them how to trim their nails, how to hand wash afterwards effectively, right? We're going to teach our kiddos how to care for their um, everything, even their hair. Why do we brush our hair, comb our hair regularly? Why do we need to tie it back when it's getting in the way? Making sure that kiddos too have easy access to any personal care supplies. So soap, obviously, toothbrush, toothpaste, obviously, tissues, hand sanitizers. What else do they need? What else could go in their backpack? What could, what could they have in their desks or, or lockers? We're teaching them about how 
to use these supplies responsibly. I still have kids who are using their arm to wipe their mouth, for example, right? So we're just making sure that we are looking at that and, and, and making sure they're advocating if they run out of supplies, for example. We want to make sure we're reinforcing all of these habits and especially our good uh, hygiene habits. So it starts with explaining, again, the reasoning behind each hygiene practice and asking them. I would start by asking them. That way we can clarify any misperceptions about it because oftentimes they just see it as a nagging point, right? Not actually something valuable that they could see valuable for themselves. And then it's about establishing a daily hygiene routine that incorporates all of those necessary habits and making it a consistent part of their daily schedule is going to be really important. We just want it to become so ingrained, so automatic that it just feels natural. They don't even have to think about it. Some kids will definitely benefit from visual cues just to help remind them to do it all and all of the steps that are involved in that hygiene practice. But we might want to start on focusing on one just to help build that success. And and definitely praise and acknowledge any efforts that they are when they are practicing good hygiene habits. Make it a positive, enjoyable experience We as well, because we want them to take responsibility for their own hygiene, not us nagging them to remind them all the time. So now is a good time to start getting into this building. What is one thing that you could be the boss of today for the, or for the rest of this week? How can we start building your success being independent with this now? right? So that's going to be important. We might need to provide that guidance initially, but we want them to all ultimately do all of these independently so that they've got that foundation for a lifetime of healthy practices. They can take control of their own health and well-being. So that was a lot, even though I said I was going to maybe do some shorter episodes. Um, I'm going to leave it there though. I just, it was all part of that healthy sort of routines and lifestyle that I don't think we explicitly talk enough about to our kiddos and all the reasoning why. I know it's all common sense, but I just wanted to bring it up to the forefront of our minds because we forget about these foundational things, especially when we're transitioning back to school. Now is a great time if you're still listening to this in the summertime, but anytime, even if it's not the summer anymore, by the time you listen to this, it's really good to start, you know, establishing some of these foundational things. So really the focus is looking how we can establish that consistent sleep routine, healthy sleep habits, uh, how we can get into um, healthy eating routines, how we can maintain consistent hygiene habits, right? And and looking at all of those types of things. Plan for this now. We want to plan for it now. It doesn't matter how old your kiddos are, if they're two or 22. We want them to become so entrenched. Then when these routines become so automatic, they're not wasting their brain power in the morning thinking about What's the healthy breakfast I need? What are the things that I need to do? Now I just got yelled at to remember to brush my teeth. No, when they can become independent and it's so automatic, they don't even need to use any brain power at all because they're just ding, 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 doing what they need to do. Guess what? Now they can focus the rest of their brain power on the demands of school and friendships and regulating their emotions and everything else that comes back with school as well. So lots to think about for right now, for this week, for today. Think of one thing and and maybe collaborate with your kiddos. One thing that they can start becoming the boss of and how do we start establishing those consistent routines for their success as they transition back to the new school year this year and just lifelong. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go and help those kiddos be bold and courageous. And I will see you next time. And make sure you check out the show notes because I will have other back to school um, notes for you. So just little resources on other things that you can help your kiddos be successful with. Enjoy the rest of your day. 